I was minding my own business a couple months ago at this point when suddenly I got contacted by uh, the guys over at Riot and uh, they said, hey, you want to come over and try 2XKO? And I said, sure. Um, I was kind of surprised because I'd never shown much interest in the game. Like I've never played any of the Riot games before. I've never played League of Legends. I have no idea who these characters are. And like my, my, my opinion of 2XKO before this event was just like, eh, it looks cool. But I was just like, I'll wait until I actually like see more to figure out what's going on. Uh, so that was that was like my where I was at before any of this stuff happened. Um, so anyway, so I uh, I ended up going to a, a sort of closed event in uh, Germany with a few other people, and we basically just got two days to just try out the game, give our thoughts, give some feedback, tell them what we thought of it, and uh, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. I guess just before we get get into it, I should do some like transparency stuff just so you guys understand you know the details of this. I was not paid to be there, you know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get any money from Riot or anything. Um, I was not required to sign anything to say like I'll give positive opinions about the game or anything. Um, you know, there was no. There was no like requirements on their part. Um, I didn't even have to record footage. Like that was kind of the crazy part. They they didn't even care if you recorded footage or not. They were just like, if you want to record footage, that's fine, but you don't have to. You can just come down, play the game, and then leave. You don't, you're not required to do anything, which was cool. Uh, so yeah, so like it was, it, it was very relaxed. Like the the approach that they went with is just, you know, come try it, tell us what you think. No requirement to do anything. No requirement to say anything, which was nice. The footage is a little bit dark. I don't quite know what happened. You guys are just gonna have to sort of bear with it. Um, it, it was a lot brighter on the actual setup, but I think it was just the way it was recorded. It came out a little bit dark. Um, so I guess just up front, let me just give you my kind of initial thoughts about this game before we get into the details. Um, I was pleasantly surprised, honestly. Like I, like I said, I knew very little about the game beforehand, um, but I had a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it has a lot more depth than I was expecting, because one, one of the only things that I knew about this game before playing it was that it had like one button specials and no no motion inputs and so immediately my brain was like firing off oh god it's gonna be one of those like super dumbed down games it's gonna be a baby game but i i am pleased to report that this game has a lot of depth but they've just kind of reinvested the depth in different places they've taken the depth out of the execution side in terms of like motions but then they've put the depth back in in other ways which i'll explain as we get there i guess keep in mind that for me, whenever I learn a new game, it's kind of always fun on day one regardless. Like there are very few games that I will hate on day one and day two. So even though I had a really positive time with the game, I enjoyed it a lot. This is not a review or a recommendation. This is not me saying go out and buy a copy, even if you could. Um, this is just me saying that like the, the two days that I had with the game were fun, but I can't speak to like how it's gonna pan out when the full version comes out or when the game gets explored more so uh yeah so just a bit of background when it came to how i sort of like planned this event like there were there was basically two ways i could have approached this game like i could have just tried to learn a bit about every character like a surface level impression but i didn't want to do that so instead i decided what i was going to do while i was there was dedicate all of my time to learning in depth two characters like one team so I, uh, I picked Echo and Ilawi. Those were the two characters and I just went all in on those two. So if you guys were hoping for like Yasuo or Darius or Ari stuff, I don't really have anything for you. I wanted to go in depth on the two characters that I played rather than like spread my time over like five characters and not have much to go through. Um, let me, so the, struct the structure of this segment is gonna be, I'm gonna do a breakdown of Echo and I'm gonna do a breakdown of, of Ilawi. And then afterwards, I have some high level matches to show you guys, which have um, uh, Darius and Ari in them, but that's not me playing. So the high, the high level matches that I'm gonna end with is gonna be um, Apology Man versus Yohozi. And uh, those two actually work at Riot as their like, like gameplay team. You know, they, they play the game, you know, for Riot as the kind of play testers and 
you know, they give feedback and uh, help design the game. So they are like, they those two have already played the game for a hundred million hours. So it is actually like high level footage, even though the game's not out yet. But that will be at the end. So uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna start with uh, Echo. Yeah. So this is like a quick run through of Echo's normals. I just recorded like uh, pretty much everything he has. He has this normal, which is interesting. This is so he's got his basic lights. Where is it? Yeah. Come on, almost this thing. This right here. This is uh this <laughs> this is Echo's Street Fighter normal. So this game actually has a ton of like references to fighting games because obviously the team are big fighting game fans. And one of them is this normal right here. This is Echo's down forward light. And it's literally just like a Street Fighter 3 Ryu crouch medium kick. One to one. Um, and this is actually a really useful normal. This is his longest reaching light. So in a lot of combos where you need like a long range light to pick up a juggle, this is like the only thing you can use. But this is a cute reference. There's quite a lot of references in this game. Like I, I think Echo's level three is called like... Um, Moment 37 or something like that. Attempt 37, thank you. It's called Attempt 37. And stuff like that is like th filled with throughout the game. The, the dev team, it's kind of like Skullgirls. If any of you guys have played Skullgirls, Skullgirls is full of references to like fighting game and FGC stuff. Um, so like for example, um, a lot of the color palettes for characters are also just references to fighting game stuff. Yeah, Ari has a Morrigan color. So this is just going through the echo uh, normals. This is his overhead. I think this is down forward medium. It's the launcher. Oh, so this is showing some movement stuff. So this game has interesting movement. So the way that the um, the button layout is for this game is that by default, you have a dash button. Like dash is like a built-in macro. So you have a one button dash. And um, if you just mash dash, you can sort of do like high, high speed movement. So like here, these back dashes that I'm doing is literally just mashing back dash. So this, is, this is how fast you move if you just mash the back dash button while holding back. Um, but there is also more advanced movement. You can wave dash in this game. So hopefully I remember to record that. Oh, he has an air dash as well. This, this is Echo's air dash, this weird little hop thing. He only has a forward air dash. Air dashes aren't very common in this game, I should say. Like, um, if you're hoping for, like, Marvel movement with, like, eight-way dashes and um, flight modes and stuff, this is not really so much in this game. It's, it's, it's more grounded than, uh, than, like, Marvel 3. I think Ari has more options, but most characters don't have an air dash. It's relatively rare. So that's super jump plus air dash. Yeah, so this is what I wanted to showcase. So like you guys saw the speed of mo uh, movement a minute ago, just using the dash button. This is this is uh, wave dashing. So this is the more advanced movement option. This is this is if you so what you're doing here, if you don't know from other games is you're pressing dash, canceling the dash into crouch and then canceling the crouch back into a dash. Uh, and doing this, you can move very fast. It varies from character to character. Like, I'll go through it in Elawi's section. Elawi is much slower. She doesn't really have a wave dash. Echo is one of the fastest wave dashes in the game. This is, like, top one of the fastest characters out there. But um, what's neat about the wave dashes in this game? I spoke to the devs about this. And uh, what they said is that because they want wave dashing to be, like, a core part of movement for some characters... They actually went to the trouble of creating like custom wave dash animations so they look a little bit less jank. Because like in some games that have wave dashing, the, 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 the process of like cancelling from a dash into a crouch can look very glitchy. You know, like have you guys seen like in Tekken when like uh, Eddie is like wave dashing around or like KBDing and it looks very buggy because like the animation of him moving and then cancelling to crouch and then moving is like glitchy as hell. It doesn't look very clean. So they actually went to the trouble of making special animations for wave dashing in this game. So they look a little bit more natural. You can kind of see that like when Echo's running in, he's like pumping both his arms. He alternates from like left to right. That's, that's how you know you're wave dashing. 
which is cool. I like that they focused on movement. All right, so now we're getting into uh, special moves. This is the first one. This is his uh, neutral plus S1. Um, so this game has two special move buttons, S1 and S2. So in this one, he chucks a projectile in front of him, and then the projectile suddenly stops. And, it, and once it stopped, it sort of hovers for a bit and slowly moves forward. And if it hits the opponent, they basically get frozen in time and they fall down very, very slowly. But that's only, that's only, that only happens once, like, it opens up. So, like, if you get hit by the projectile during the early part where it's still flying out. Where is it? Yeah, like that. So if the projectile is still got, like being sent out, it's just a normal fireball it knocks down. But if the projectile like reaches its max range and then opens up, it like freezes you in time like that. And you get like, you have like 45 minutes to pick up a combo off that. It's, it's really good for controlling space. You can just kind of put it out. And like, there's an example right there. So that, that shows you like how vulnerable your opponent is if they get hit by it once it opens up. You can like run in from full screen and pick up a combo. You can also do it in the air. Works in the air too, same thing. He throws it diagonally down if you do it in the air. Same properties. And then again, if they, if they get hit, you got all day to convert. Do specials have a cooldown? No, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no timers or cooldowns or anything like that. What was I demonstrating here? I forgot what I was demonstrating here. Basic BMBs. Oh, okay, that's what it was. So, like, if you press, uh, where is it? If if you press down plus S one. Rather than throwing out the projectile like way in front of him, he just like pops it up in the air in front of him. And you can use it as like an Oki tool. So I think I'm gonna show an example of that here. If my execution didn't suck. So you get a hard knockdown, yeah. And then you top throw it up in the air like that. So the, the down version is very good for Oki. Are there auto combos? Uh, no, surprisingly. I was expecting there to be like a baby combo option where you can just like mash one button and do combos. There, is, there isn't anything like that in the game, at least as it currently exists. So um, like even if you're a complete beginner, you're going to have to do like a basic light, medium, heavy string. You can't just mash one button and get a combo. Another special. This thing here, this is his down forward plus S1, I believe. So he does, he, he rushes at you and does three hits. And uh, the third hit is actually a cross up. So this is really good. It's not a very good combo tool because it knocks down on the last hit. Um, but what's really cool is that if you call an assist between the second and third hits, he suddenly like teleports behind and you can set up all kinds of crazy shit. This is good for like uh, mix ups and set play. There is a gap though. So if your if your opponent if your opponent has like a a wake up DP or something, they can interrupt before the cross up hits. So it's it's meant to be used with like a, uh like an assist to cover it. All right, so this is where things get interesting. This is kind of what I wanted to talk about most with Echo. Um, so this is his S two stuff. Uh, Echo's S two specials, and there's quite a few of them. Whenever you do them, he leaves behind an after image, an echo, you might say, of himself for uh, a couple of seconds. And it mimics whatever movement he was already doing. And if you press the S2 button again, he follows up with, he teleports back to the uh, after image and does like a follow up attack. And it starts out simple, you can just use it to do like a follow-up attack like that, but it gets very technical uh, as we progress. So the first thing to mention is that, 
no matter where you are on the screen, even if you're behind the opponent or way up in the air, you can instantly teleport back to the, uh, the after image and set up all kinds of nasty mix-ups. So for example here, I put out, put out the after image, I teleport miles away and then I cross you up. It's pretty crazy. There's no, there's no limit to how far away you can get from it. You can literally just teleport to it from miles away. And so this is where things get even more complicated. So, uh, as well as having all of his specials on S2, you can also hold them down, which causes him to charge charge them up for like half a second. And so that's this version of it. That's the charged version. So the charged version is a bit different. So number one, this is way more plus on hit, so you can actually link after this. But what's what's special about the charge version is that if you teleport back to the after image, you are instantly actionable. So like the uncharged versions, when you teleport to them, he does like a like a canned attack. He'll like slash you. But if you, if you charge them up uh, and then teleport to the to the shadows, you can just instantly do anything out of it. Like there's like no recovery. It's just an instant teleport. I think you can link into Stan Medium, but I'm not. Sh I don't remember if I got footage of that. But yeah, you can combo off the charged version, and there it is. So, so like, as I say, as soon as you teleport to this thing, you are instantly actionable. You can do whatever you want. You can throw. You can attack. You can jump. You can dash. So this is where the really nasty like mix-up potential comes in. And look, like, look at that. Set up the charged after image. Teleport to it. Instantly hit them with jump li uh, Stan Light. Pretty cheap. Uh, this is... Did I do Air S2? Yeah. <laughs> like, look look at that mix-up. I mean, remember this is a team game, so there's also going to be assists and shit on the screen. So if you can set up the after image, you can be, like, up here. Echo is in the top right-hand corner of the screen, and it's just like, oh, it's a low cross-up. Crouching light from behind. Diabolical. This character is definitely going to be a mix-up machine. Okay, so this is the next special. This is a uh, down forward plus S2. He does a little roll. With there's no attack attached to this one. He just does a roll that leaves behind an after image. Um, this one's mostly for set play, I think, because it's very it's much faster than his other ones, and it can pass through. So you can roll through the opponent and then leave behind an after image and then teleport to it. So this one doesn't have an attack built into it, but it's very, very good for mix-ups. Like that, for example. Okay, so this is Air S2. He comes down with like a slash from above, which also leaves behind a uh, an echo, which you can teleport to. This also ground bounces on air connect so it's also very useful for his combos so like as you see here yeah if you if you do that in like a basic combo in an air sequence you can do that so that's like his basic vmb so again this is more more mix up bullshit so what i'm doing here is i'm setting up this is the charged version of air s2 so this is the charged version which leaves behind the more useful after image and I'm doing a string and then teleporting and then instantly hitting you with overhead jump light. So, uh, yeah, like I said, mix-up machine. No, you don't have to return to the image. It's entirely optional. It disappears after a while. So I think I'm just screwing around with some basic combo stuff here. Very unoptimal BMBs. Oh yeah, this is what this is what I was being asked about earlier. So, um, someone asked if, uh, if you can have multiple shadows on the screen at the same time, and the answer is no, but as I said earlier, you can overwrite the old one with a different one. So that's what I'm doing here. So like, for example, if I don't like where the current one is placed, I can do certain commands to replace it with different ones in, in different positions like that, rather than teleport to it. So there's a lot of freedom with this. 
And I think that's that's what I like about this game is that what I liked about 2XKO from what I played is the way that it does a lot with a little. So like you look at here's here's how I describe it. Like you look at the character's move lists on the little piece of paper, and it's got like I don't know four specials on it, and you think, oh what four specials? Is this gonna be like a baby's first fighting game? But they they rather than giving you like ten thousand moves to work with. They give you like a small number of specials, but they give you like 10,000 different ways to use them. Which is kind of a unique direction to go in. There's not that many moves, but there's so many ways you can like combine them together. Alright, I think that was all the specials. This is his supers. Uh, his level 1 supers. So this is down down plus uh, S1. This is his first super. Uh, he throws out the projectile and it does like a boomerang thing and it goes out and comes back. So quite a few characters in this game like can end their combos with a super. Like you do your basic BMB, you get a hard knockdown and then you OTG with a super. Uh, Echo doesn't really do that. So like Echo supers, you can't really just like stick them on the end of a combo for free damage. So like here I show that. I get a hard knockdown, I do the super and it just whiffs. So his, his super is not meant to be used like that at the end of a combo. I think Echo's, Echo's uh, S1 super is meant to be used early because you can combo after it. So I hope I got some footage of that here. Yeah, there we go. So you, you generally you want to use this super like early and then dash in and pick up a combo off it. Like this. You can do stuff like that. I've got some much better combos to show you guys later on. Oh, okay, here we go. Here's some. Here's something interesting. I think you guys will like this. This is Echo's other super, his other level one. This is down, down, S2. And this is an install super. So he, he pulls the ripcord on the back of his thingy. And now, for the next, like, 15 seconds, you have an after image at all times that you can teleport to as much as you want. It follows, it follows everything you do on a delay. It's like uh, always about like a couple seconds behind whatever you're doing or wherever you were. You can use it for combos. So you, like right here, I'm just doing like heavy. What I'm doing here is like heavy and then teleport back to the clone and then heavy teleport back to the clone, like just looping heavy. It's very cool for combos, very cool for mix ups. It's a cool super. I think it's time we talk about Ilawi. Ilawi was my favorite of the two characters that I played. I, I really enjoyed it, Ilawi. I might even like like use Ilawi as my like starting character when the actual game drops. Ilawi was super fun. I figured out a lot more with Ilawi as well. Like my Echo, I understand how his kit works, but there was so much that I didn't know about him until like the end of day two. But like, I think Ilawi was the one that I figured out the most about. Did you try all fuses? Oh man, I haven't even talked about that yet. There's so many mechanics in this game. There are so many system mechanics in this game. This game has two different push blocks defensively. Uh, this game has high parries and low parries. Um, this game has a thing called the fuse system, which you might see on the character select screen. Here we are. This is the fuse system, which is like a, a variation that you pick alongside your characters which are basically just like different system mechanics that you can choose from. Um, I mostly just use the default one, which is Fury, which gives you like bonus damage when your health is low. And you also can do like a, a dash cancel, like a like an FADC from Street Fighter. But there's like multiple different fuses and some of them have like, I think one of them lets you DHC. So you can cancel your point character's super into your secondary character's super. Because you can't normally do that. You have to pick the fuse for that. Um, one of them lets you um, like double up on assists. So if you, there's one, I can't remember what it's called, but there's there's a fuse where when you, you when you call an assist, your assist character will come out and do their attack. And then if you press the assist button again, they will do a second attack. They can do like two back-to-back -back assists. But I didn't really explore that too much. That was like beyond my scope for this. I was mostly just focusing on character stuff. So as you can see immediately, Alawi is much, much slower than, than Echo, unsurprisingly. She's a, more of a big body. 
She can still she can still move a little bit, but she's her, her dash is significantly slower. Uh, she has pretty big normals though. She has nice big hitboxes. I'm just going through her normals right now. That's her. That's her launcher. Down heavy. Down medium. Crouch medium. So Elawi's Elawi's kind of archetype is like she's kind of difficult to get in with. She's hard to open people up because she doesn't have like great mix-up options or like armored moves or anything. She's difficult to get the party started with. But once you get a hit with this character, her set play and Oki is absolutely devious. Like I, she might have like the most <laughs> Unfair Oki situations in the game with this character, I'll, but we'll get into that. She was really fun. This is her cross up. This is jump down heavy. It crosses you up from like half screen away, which is kind of wild. Yeah, that was a combo. Like this is this is jump. <laughs> this is max range jump charge down heavy. Cross up from there. And it does so much hit stun that you can link into this afterwards. She hits like a she hits like a truck and she has some big ass normals. Okay, so this is special number one. This is her standing S1. Um, which is basically just a big hit. This thing goes nearly full screen. Um, I don't think this is an overhead, even though it looks like one. She does slam downwards. I think this is a mid. It's just a really huge move. It, like you can snipe people trying to do stuff from full screen pretty easily with this thing. And it hard knockdowns on hit. Uh, and this is where things get complicated. So, Ilawi has a unique mechanic in this game where a bunch of her moves will spawn a tentacle on the screen. So, uh, that was her S2, this move here, standing S2, this lunge. On hit, this spawns a tentacle. And Basically, the way it works is that when she has a tentacle on screen, a bunch of her special moves get bonus secondary effects. So, uh... I forget what order I recorded this in. Alright, so these are the... If you have a tentacle already out, you also can do two, like, special commands. This is back plus... I want to say back plus S1 which causes the tentacle to just attack the opponent like like it homes in wherever they are even even from that distance away from the tentacle if she does back s1 it just smacks you like that and the other one is if she does down back s1 the tentacle like grabs you and uh, hits twice which basically you can use this to like lock people down while you pressure them You can also have two tentacles out at the same time, like this. I'm just showing Max is out at two, two at once. So, remember that special I showed you a minute ago? The uh, S1, where she does like a full screen massive hit that does a hard knockdown? Well, if you've got a tentacle on the screen, this happens. It pulls them in and you get a combo afterwards. <laughs> So that full screen move is now a combo starter if there's a tentacle out. Which is pretty scary. It does a, it does a ground bounce if they're not already uh, launched. So you can just do like S1, tentacle pulls them in and you get a full combo out of it. Into a hard knockdown. Into another tentacle. Which is pretty cheap. Okay, this is, uh, what special is this? This is forward plus S2, I think. This big forward jump. Um, this is an overhead. You have to block this high. It's an overhead that goes, like, half screen. And she can string into this thing. And like the previous one, it also spawns a tentacle. You can also charge it. This is also chargeable, and if you charge it, you get a full combo off it. And also, if this hits on air connect, you get a ground bounce out of it as well. So, full screen overheads that start combos. 
you like that, play Alawi. Uh, this special here is kind of an interesting one. This is Jump S1, which I initially couldn't figure out what the use of this move was. She just kind of like flicks the tentacle at you. And it's very hard to connect with this on grounded opponents. Like it doesn't hit very nicely and doesn't seem to do much. But the secret behind this special is that if you hit them with jump S1 when there's a tentacle anywhere on the stage, even if it's off screen, even if the tentacle is nowhere near them and you hit with jump S1, that happens. It suddenly teleports underneath them and gives you a full combo. Uh, this is her wreckers. This is back plus S1, I think. So she has wreckers if you like wrecker characters. These three hits here. So it's like one, one, two, three. Did I do it? There we go. Three hit Wrecker into hard knockdown. Uh, the first hit of the Wrecker, this very first one, is very obnoxious. The first Wrecker hit goes like half screen. It's very fast and it's very disjoint. This is kind of a move that you can just stick out in neutral and just fish for hits. It also has, I believe, it has like projectile destroying properties. So if you just like throw out the first wrecker and they do a fireball, Illawi will win. It's also good for like just doing pressure strings with Illawi, like this is a good example. So like you can just do two, two wreckers, wait and see if the opponent is getting hit or not, call an assist and then tag and convert into a full combo. So it's very good to like fish for hits with. So this is her, this is her, I showed this earlier, but this is her neutral S2. Do the tentacles despawn if you hit Alawi or do you need to hit them? You have to hit the tentacles. That's, I forgot to mention that. So if you, if you attack the tentacles, you can break them, but you have to actually hit them. If you hit Alawi, they stay out. They're completely separate. <laughs> this is where things get really cheap. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering like, okay. I understand that these tentacles are designed to extend her combos, but this is where things get really nasty. So, if you do a hard knockdown with Ilawi while there is a tentacle already on the screen, the tentacle will automatically OTG for you. And this is where her, like, nasty-ass fucking mix-up game starts, because her throw is a hard knockdown. So you throw your opponent and the tentacle grabs them and you get a full combo off it. So take the throw is not an option against this character. This is this is the like the start of she has like the best strike throw mix-ups in the game pretty much. But this is this is another special. This is I think the last one. This one here. This is Air S2. It's like a air combo finisher. It like slams them into the ground and then also plants a, uh, a tentacle. And this is really good because it's a hard knockdown and you get Oki. So like this is basically the structure of Illawi's gameplay is you do a combo ending in that move. And then if your opponent wakes up and gets thrown because they were blocking, they die because the tentacle will OTG them. And if they try not to get thrown and you go for a strike, they die. So, uh, her, her mix-up game is so cheap. So this is like a basic, like, simple BMB. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention her supers, yeah. Uh, this is down down plus S1. This is probably her most useful super. She does like a big swing in front of her and this OTGs. So you can basically stick this at the end of any combo and it's just free damage. This thing, big hitbox, long range, easy to use. So I mentioned a minute ago that like a lot of her specials do hard knockdowns. This is where you combine it with her level one super. So pretty much all of her specials that do a knockdown, you can just tag this on the end. So for example, here I do, this is uh, uh, S1. And then you can just tag on the super for free. You can do it after wreckers as well. So you can do three wreckers, then super. You can do this as well. Uh, and this is this is a unique feature of her super as well. 
So if you've got any tentacles on the screen already and you do her super, what you can do is you can actually hold down the S1 button during the super. And what that'll do, it has like a special effect, is it will actually teleport any tentacles that are on the screen to your opponent's knockdown location for Oki. So you can like reposition all of your tentacles after her super. So like here, for example, I do like a combo into a knockdown, which spawns the tentacle right there. But it, the problem is that it's not close to the opponent right now. So I can do the super, hold the button down, and you see it, it disappears and then respawns on, on top of them for maximum unfair Oki. This is our other super. This is down down S2. This is kind of an interesting sort of utility super. So she summons two tentacles that are like upgraded giant ones. And they just automatically attack the opponent for like 10 seconds. There's like a timer at the bottom left. And they just slap the shit out of you. So you basically just can put those down and then go to town on your opponent. Yeah, like get a knockdown, put them out, and then beat the shit out of your opponent while the tentacles protect you and do stuff. The other thing about this super, you know how I said a minute ago it spawns two tentacles for you? If you've already got two on the screen already, as well as, as well as summoning two super tentacles, it will also upgrade your existing ones into super tentacles. So if you already have two out and you do the super, this is where things get a little bit crazy. You now have four that are all attacking. <laughs> this shit is crazy. Good luck defending against that is all I'm saying. One more thing. This is one of the coolest things about Ilawi. I really liked this, by the way. This was really sick. So, like, if you do a move with Ilawi that puts a tentacle on the screen and then tag out, you would think the tentacle would just disappear because it's not a thing that, like, other characters can take advantage of. But they actually made it so that even if you bring in your other character, they can still take advantage of her left behind tentacles. So, like, normally Echo, for example, can't combo off his throw. But if you do something with Alawi and then bring Echo in, suddenly Echo has new ways to extend his combos because you can take advantage of the tentacle. Like, for example, here. I, I mistimed it. you got to knock them into the tentacle, though. There you go. Like that. I dropped the combo, but yeah, this, that is really neat. Like, um, you can create special synergies by taking advantage of a mechanic that's completely unique to Ilawi. The devs, when I spoke to them, they said they wanted more things like that. They want more ways of, like, integrating each character's tool set to create, like, unique synergies together. But yeah, both characters can take advantage of the tentacles, not just Ilawi. All right, so this is where I was showing off some combo stuff. This is this is where I really had fun with her. She's got some really fun combos, and they're actually quite difficult as well. So this is like a more advanced combo. This one right here. That's a pretty cool combo, right? Let me explain how this combo works, because there's more going on here than is obvious. So I do this launcher into uh, S2. And then I'm actually doing right here, I'm doing micro dash forward into back L, uh, back S1 to activate it. You have to micro dash here. And then I'm doing semi charged uh, forward S2, which is the overhead, which just barely hits them before they hit the ground and ground bounces them. There's, this is a very tight combo to hit. Like I had to practice this a lot to get the hang of it. So this is kind of where the combo depth of this game comes in. So like I mentioned earlier, the depth is not in the inputs. Like there's no motions or anything. The difficulty of the advanced combos in this game is, is there's lots of like semi-charged timings. I think some corner BMB stuff. Her combos in the corner are much easier. She has some really simple corner BMBs which do a ton of damage. Yeah. This is this is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. This is like her basic like combo into mix up structure. So like I do like a basic BNB here in the corner. 
which is this. And then I end the BMB with this, which is Air S2, which will hard knock down my opponent and put out a tentacle. And then I go for Meaty Throw, and the tentacle OTGs them into another combo, which I dropped. But yeah, her, her, her strike throw mix-ups are devilish. I realized at this point that I forgot to record uh, Echo's level 3, so I think I went back and did level 3s here at the end. This is Elawi's level 3, if you haven't already seen it. It's really cool. Oh, it might be it might be level twos. I forget exactly how much super you need for it, but they're like the the you know the the fully maxed out supers. Correction, they're level twos, not level threes. Uh, this is echoes. The inputs for these is down down S one plus S two. That's Echoes. Now the thing about Echoes, I wish I could have shown you guys this because his is a bit more interesting than it, than it first looks. So if you just do Echoes Raw, he just slaps you and then goes into this animation. The time stop animation. But what's really neat is that if you do this super on Wake Up, because it is an actual like reversal, it has a special animation where um, it acts almost like a counter. So if your opponent does like a meaty and you wake up with Echo's level 3, Echo will get knocked down and then suddenly the camera will like zoom in for a cinematic and he'll reverse time from getting knocked down and then he'll get back up again like in reverse and then do the level 3. But unfortunately I couldn't capture it because I didn't have control over the dummy. So I don't know if there's footage of it out there, but he has a really sick special animation for if you do wake up level 2. Um, but I don't know if it's already out there somewhere. I couldn't, I couldn't get it from training mode, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, that's Echo and Elawi, and I guess we'll finish up by watching some actually good players play this game. So because I, I wanted to showcase some good gameplay, some like actual like competent players, I figured it probably wasn't very good to show you my gameplay after like two days of practice. So I, uh, I shanghaied uh, Yohozi and uh, Apology Man. Dawn and Vineeth, to uh, demonstrate, I basically just said to them, can you guys play a game against each other, play a match, and show off as much cool high level shit as you possibly can. And uh, yeah, this is that. So I think, if I remember rightly, it was Yohozi on the left playing Echo Elawi, and it's Apology Man on the right playing uh, Ari and uh, whatever that guy's name is, Darius. This is what actually good players playing this game looks like. I guess just before we start real quick, I'm probably going to like pause this a bit to try and like point out things that I see. But if you just want to watch the raw gameplay with no interruptions or anything, I'm going to stick that at the end just as like an extra bit. <laughs> Darius is cheap, man. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to try much Darius stuff. But Darius is very cheap. He's got this bleed mechanic, which is very obnoxious. Oh, so there's a good example. That's <laughs> exactly what I was saying earlier. I forgot to get footage of this. So you can see that Echo throws the uh, projectile up into the air. And then you can actually baseball hit. Like, you can go for the home run. This is stand heavy, I think, into the fireball. And then just smack it at their face. It is cheap. <laughs> There's so much happening on the screen in this game, it's hard to keep track of everything. That is actually one bit of feedback I gave in terms of things that I thought could maybe use a little bit of tightening up, is that when there's like two assists on the screen and people are doing like uh, tag cancels and stuff, it can be a bit tricky sometimes to like keep track of like which character is currently in control. They do have the indicators above the head, so it'll say like P1, P2. But it still can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Yeah, assists in this game stay on screen for ages, especially after a burst. What defensive options are there in this game? There is actually loads of defensive options. There is like... 
seven different d defensive mechanics you can take advantage of and wake up. There's like an invincible explosion that you can do that's unsafe. Uh, you can push block. <laughs> you can parry. You can low parry. You can do a special push block that costs one bar to send your opponent to full screen. Did you guys see that, by the way? Oh my god. Remember, I was talking about Echo's mix-ups earlier. Did you guys see this shit? Alright, I gotta break this down real quick. So, Illaoi here. This is, this is Wreckers. So, Illaoi does three Wreckers, which ends in a hard knockdown. Then, uh, Yohozi cancels into an assist. Or calls an assist. So, Echo comes in. Then, uh... Tag cancels, or handshake tags, I guess is the proper word. So now Echo is the character that's in control. Echo is now the primary character. During this hard knockdown. Then does full charge uh, down forward plus S2 to set up the, uh, the after image. Rolls to the other side. So now Echo is on the left over here during the hard knockdown. And then tags back. Immediately snaps back to the right side. Yeah, G good luck blocking this shit when this gets even more complicated. Fiendish mix-ups. Did you block? <laughs> Did you guys block that mix-up? Did you block the right direction? And a cool-ass combo. Yeah, this is another, like, an example of, like, how the, there's a lot of depth to the tagging system in this game. So I'll just break down what happened there as well, because it's very easy. If you haven't played this game before, it's very easy to, like, see stuff happening, but not really, like, know what's going on. So, like, here's the thing. Uh, Darius hits Echo here. Echo bursts to break out of the combo, which causes Ilawi to appear on the screen. But when you do a burst in this game... Your second character will come in, but you don't actually take control of that character. So even though Ilawi came in, Echo is still the primary character. The one that you're in control of. So at this point, Echo now throws his fireball like that. And then during the startup of the fireball throw, Ilawi is still on the screen. And now you tag cancel, so Ilawi is now the primary character while Echo is chucking his fireball. And now you follow in behind the fireball to get pressure. So in the space of like one second, you've got so much going on. This game is kind of like mental overload. Like there is so much to keep track of in terms of like the tag mechanics of this game. Even going frame by frame, I don't understand. It's it's one of those things where you guys probably just don't know what I'm talking about when I when I explain it. But when you actually get a chance to play the game, it starts to make sense. Like, I, I was starting to understand it during, like, day two. It took me a little while to get used to it, but I was starting to get the hang of it. It's very chaotic, though. Also, yeah. Install combo, by the way. I was trying to demonstrate one earlier, but I suck at the game. This is the, uh, the install. Down, down, S2. All ass combo. Lots of, uh... Lots of, uh, cancels into the, the echo. Yeah, good luck, commentators. Oh, this was a really neat uh, Ilawi combo. I didn't even know half of this stuff was possible. Like, I was just trying to, like, desperately take notes and learn this stuff at the time. But we've got... So Ilawi comes in. Tentacle hits. Then this is down S1, but because there is a tentacle on screen, it has the special follow-up, which is that. So the tentacle grabs them and brings them back down again. Then she gets like a jump. I think this is jump light, and then picks up a combo into another jump loop. And then it ends with, I think this is, 
This is interesting. So this is three jump lights here. Three jump lights into jump S2. And uh, what's happening here is that the S2 is hitting so high up that you just barely have enough time to OTG them with the tentacle, which you normally can't do. You normally can't do that pickup. That's like a very specific combo route into, into super. Like there's so much going on with the combo structure of this game. It's, it's hard to cover it all with so little experience. How much FPS is the game capped? I mean, it runs at 60, like every fighting game. As far as I know. Why do they go with down down inputs? Uh, I'm not fond of down down inputs myself, but it is what it is. You only need them for supers. <laughs> Ari combo. Don't ask me to break down Ari combos. I have no idea what this character does. Just just appreciate them for what they are. This was a combo that I posted on Twitter. Apology Man Darius combo that goes on forever. Oh damn. Very nearly kills. Did like 70%. God, that's so cool. Oh my god. There is so much to echo that I didn't get a chance to fully explore. Like, look at, look at how much nonsense is going on here. That's so crazy. So, gets the stray hit, activates the super, the install, then does a bunch of teleport cancels with the after image like that. All of that is a combo. It's like you're doing heavy and then immediately teleport canceling back to the shadow. And then this is jump charged heavy into... I forget what this move is. I think this is like down... Down plus S2 when there's an after image. He does like an explosion. I can't remember the details of that one. Yeah, Dawn had Dawn had so many cool combos with uh, Echo. It was wild. Also, did you guys block that mix up? Be honest in chat. Did you get hit by this reset into the overhead right here? Did you see this? Gets the air hit, drops the combo, teleports back to the after image overhead. Did you guys block that? Chump scare? Oh my god. That's so cool. Read it like a book. Yeah, so this is a DHC. Cancelling from super to super like this right here. Uh, this is only possible if you pick the, um, the right... What's it called? Flux? I forget what the name of this, the thing is. Fuse, thank you. The right fuse, yeah. You have to pick you have to pick the fuse to allow you to do that. So much chaos on the screen. Does a round become snowball if you lose your assist character? No, actually, because... Well, not really, because this game is weird. It's unlike any tag fighter I've ever played in my life, but you can still call your partner even if they're dead. Weirdly. You don't, you don't lose your partner completely if they die. 
there's a th yeah, there's a thing called Last Stand where you can do like a, a special like super kind of where you call in your dead teammate. Yeah, it's like right there you can see like this is this is how you kind of deal with Alawi defensively. She can cover you in like the tentacles, but you can just hit them. Like right here, Darius just does a stand light to get rid of it. Also, there's rounds. I guess I forgot to mention that as well. If you guys didn't already notice. This is a, a weird example of a tag game where there's actually rounds and meter carries over between rounds. So as you can see like up here, it's not just first to one. There are actually rounds in this even after both your characters die, which is unusual for tag games. How does aerial block work in this game? It's just normal, you can just block in the air. <laughs> 4x KO? Technically it's 4x KO. How good is parry? Parry was hard to test. Pa parry in this game, I think, is like a high-level mechanic. Here's the thing, right? Um, one of the things that a lot of us experience playing this game is that Darius is extremely obnoxious. Um, and, like, the best way that I can describe Darius in this game is he's kind of like Honda in Street Fighter VI, where... If you don't, if you aren't playing the game at a high level, Darius will ruin your life. Because, like, Darius is designed to be countered if you can take advantage of the defensive mechanics in this game. So, um, sort of like in Street Fighter, in Street Fighter 6, the reason Honda is so obnoxious at low level is because the game is designed for you to perfect parry him. Like, headbutt and butt slam from E Honda are designed to be perfect parried. But if you aren't playing at a level where you can perfect parry, Honda is a war crime in Street Fighter. And Darius is kind of like that in this game. Like that was a bit of feedback that I gave to the devs. I said like, I think this character might be a problem at low level because you just do ground strings with Darius and his pressure just goes on forever. And the only way to like counter it is you have to take full advantage of like push block and parry. And if you aren't push blocking and parrying against Darius, you are just gonna die. Like, so yeah, Darius might be a scrub killer character. Darius is a war crime in League Two. Damn, it's lore accurate. Oh, this is a cool thing. This is a thing that I'll let, I'll let Darius's level two play out, so, so you guys can see the animation, but. It's a cute animation. This is this is like a, a neat feature in this game. So there's two different ways that you can call assists in this game. Um, if you just tap the assist button, your character will come in, your assist character, and do their attack immediately. But what you can actually do is you can hold down the assist button and your character will come in, but they won't immediately do their attack they'll like run straight towards the opponent and then do the attack on a delay. And what you can do is you can do this cheap ass fucking mix up where you call a delayed assist. So Darius comes in here as a delayed assist. He runs across the screen. You see the assist and you panic and you jump to try and avoid it. And because you jumped, they now handshake tag. So Darius is now in control and then you just do jump air throw. You tried to dodge the assist. Handshake tag plus air throw. Very cheap. I, I don't know anything about frame data. I, I can't I can't tell you about the frames on parry and stuff. I know no frame data for this game. Happy birthday. That's Darius' DP.
more cool echo combos. Echo combos for days. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. These gamers are gaming? Yeah, like I said, this is what high level gameplay looks like. play the game frame one when it comes out i'm definitely gonna play the game when it comes out i can't i can't decide if i'm gonna dedicate any competitive effort into it but i'll definitely just put a bit of time into it is there air teching you mean if someone drops a combo yeah if you just hold any attack button and your opponent drops a combo, you can air tech. What do you mean throw techs? Why is it so dark? Like I said, the, the footage came out a little bit dark. I don't know if it was, I think it was just an issue with the recording. It was much more vibrant in person. I think it's a, an HDR issue. Oh, Darius, man. I got a lot of comments when I when I posted the Darius combo on Twitter. I got a lot of people saying that they didn't like this game's hit stop. But I think it's mostly just Darius. Like, I think Darius has like 10 times as much hit stop on his animations as everyone else. To like, give the sense that his hits are like really heavy and weighty. Most other characters don't have this like super slow hit stop on their attacks. Bleed. Yeah, Darius's bleed mechanic. I didn't get much. Like I said, I don't know that much about the other characters. But what's extremely cheap <laughs> about Darius's bleed mechanic is that once he's applied the status to you, like every single special move does obscene amounts of chip damage after that. Like if he applies, if he applies the bleed effect to you and then just does his super on block, you lose like thirty percent of your health instantly in chip damage. Yeah, you can die. You can die from chip damage. He can chip you. Like there are lots of like uh, guaranteed chip out sequences in this game. <laughs> oh my god! All right, I gotta show you that one again. We got. We gotta go through this real slow, so you guys can see how cheap this shit is. All right, so where do we even start with this? All right, so if you look at Ilawi on the on the right, let me try and let me try and break this down to his bare essentials because there's so much going on in this game. It's hard to <laughs> it's hard to break it down. So she does air s two, which uh, puts down the tentacle. She also cover calls the uh, echo assist to cover it and make it safe. So echo is now coming in as an assist. Then we get echo throwing the fireball as an assist. And then this is now cancelled into a handshake tag, I believe. So Echo is now the, uh, yeah, Echo is now the in-control character. And you're stuck blocking the fireball. And then we get, during the block stun of the fireball, I think this is, uh, yeah, okay, down forward plus uh, S2 to roll through to the other side. So now, now Echo is on the left. Echo is now behind you. And then immediately cancelling early, straight back to the original side to like fake you out. Oh, I'm actually on this side. GG's. <laughs> oh damn. Echo's mix-ups are so cheap, man. Good luck blocking that character. Some fancy Ari combos. Great damage is recoverable, yes. Yeah. 
I, I don't, I know very little about Ari, but the one, one of the things I do know is that she has these like orbs that surround her. You can see like there's like a blue orb around her. And I believe they're like a limited resource. She only has like a set stock of them. And she can use them to like extend her combos and pressure. They're like OTG and stuff. They're very combo friendly, but you only have like a limited number of them. I think you can get them back by doing her throw, if I remember rightly. Yeah, so uh, I think that's the end of the, the matches. Yeah, okay. Again, just to summarize, I had a lot of fun. It was a really fun event. I think what stuck out to me, just to wrap things up real quick, what really stuck out to me when I was talking to the, the team over at Riot about this game when I was there was the fact that Every single person on the on the Riot team loved playing this game even off the clock. You know like how if you if you work in some kind of like environment, you don't want to do that thing in your free time usually. Like I've talked to devs on other video games, they don't want to play their own game in their free time, you know what I mean? On the at the end of the first day, we all went out for a meal after the after the day was finished. And then we got back after after dinner at like, I don't know, like 10 p.m. or something. And I was like pretty tired, so I went back to the hotel room. But like half the Riot staff, even at like 10 p.m. after a full day of playing this game, went back to the venue just to play more. I think they were there until like 2 a.m. just like messing around in the game. Like it, it's, it's your job to play this game and they're still playing to like 2 a.m. just for fun. Like, that was really reassuring to me, you know? Seeing the people who, who have had so much time and exposure to this game still choosing to play it that much outside of work, I think that's probably a good sign. I, I don't have much more to say other than that. Other than I'm excited to play this game some more in the future. Stay tuned. I will see you guys in the next video.